Oh, well, guys, as the title says, and so it begins. This will be the beginning of my Hinderer journey. A um, lot to talk about in this video. This is an unboxing. However, the box this came in literally wouldn't fit under my camera. Um, the gentleman I bought this from, uh, Mr. Savio. Crap. I forgot his name. One second. Savio. I log in out of uh, Union, Washington. He is also the owner of Carnival EDC. He makes some really cool custom Hanks. I will be uh, reviewing a couple of Hanks that he sent me to check out in my in one of my upcoming videos. Um, I made a trade with uh, Savio uh, off of a uh, Facebook uh, knife group that I'm in. Trade went flawlessly. Knife got here a day early. It was exactly as advertised. So, yes, I have already opened it. I have already looked at it. Came in your standard fair hinder box. Um, let's see. Here we go. This is an XM18 3.5 M390 skinny slicer no chill triway work and finish blue GT. It's a, it's a lot of name. So, here we go. Inside the box. We have the knife, we have the alternate hardware, which is the Teflon washers or the phosphor bronze washers. Um, so I'm assuming that means that it currently has the bearings installed. Um, it comes with a piece of paper for instructions on how to change the driveway pivot system. Go to this YouTube channel. And it looks like this knife was hand assembled by Miss Amanda Yoder. So, thank you, Amanda. I've already checked it out. Already know you did an excellent job. So, let's set this to the side and check out the star of the show. Um, he changed the lighting a little bit because that's not really showing up blue like it should. I don't know if that's going to help any. Um, this knife is a, is a deep navy blue. Texture scales, very nice. Um, the one thing I was concerned about trading for or purchasing a hinder without handling it was the action because I have found them to be inconsistent. Maybe I was handling previous generations. I don't know. I'm not going to bad mouth the action overall. Um, I have, I have experienced some that were had a very lame detent. However, this one does not. It's very snappy. It's not heavy by any means and I can fail it guys, but um, you know, in case uh, you're one of those people that that care, yes, it does drop shut quite smoothly. Um, bearings feel like they're really good quality. And let's see if I can make it fail. Yeah, I can fail it. But, you know, with little to no effort, um, I can deploy it very dependably. Um, in case you don't know anything about a Hinder XM18, I'm assuming most of the people watching this video already do. Um, Rick Kander was a former firefighter, decided he wanted to make a hard use knife, started uh, RHK, which is Rick Kander Knives, and has since then been making high quality um, folding knives and some fixed blades. Uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of different models. He's a lot like uh, Chris Reeve in the fact that he could just continue making the same great knife over and over. Because they, you know, they sell out. There's really no reason for him to to make a whole lot of new designs. However, he has recently started. Um, it seems like with more blade shapes, more blade options. You know, with a chawl, without a chawl. Um, this is the skinny, so it is uh, considerably thinner behind the edge than a standard XM18. He's been uh, he's been uh, experimenting with several different finishes, blade finishes on the knives. This is the working finish. He has the, uh, is it the battle pickup or something to that effect? I apologize. It's almost like an apocalyptic finish. It's very cool looking. It's supposed to maybe, you know, maybe what a knife would look like if you picked it up off the battlefield. You know, it had already been to, to hell and back, but um, really cool looking. <clears throat> I'm very happy with this, with, with what I got. I wasn't extremely picky. I, I, I wasn't, I didn't set out to acquire any certain hinder. 
Um, I am glad that I got the, the slicer because I do want it to cut. And now I want to talk about the elephant in the room. Um, if you guys have been following my channel a long time, um, you probably watched my video about Rick Hender uh, and some of the drama that surrounded uh, Rick Hender and Brian Kim. Um, I still stand behind that. Um, I did not purchase this knife um, with any false impressions that it was going to have super long lasting edge retention. Excuse me. Um, however, I don't care. Um, I said that in my last video. I don't, I don't necessarily care about the edge retention on this knife. Um, from what I've seen, um, this thing performs about the same as, uh, you know, just a moderately heat treated S35 VN, even though it is the more popular M390. Um, hard to bash Rick on his M390 when 95% of the M390 out there is about going to perform about the same as his does. There are some exceptions. Spider Co. does an, uh, an exceptionally good job with their M390. I do feel like, uh, you know, Rick could sell even more knives or make them even more sought after, especially in the, you know, the slicer model if he up the HRC. But, you know, guys, if you're selling out, if you're, you know, every time you release a knife, it, it sells out immediately. Why would you change anything? So I get it. And the reason why I don't care, because 95% of my collection is, um, is knives that I absolutely do care about the edge retention and the performance. That's why I bought this American Blade Works in, uh, in MagnaCut. That's why I own so many Spider Co's. Um, but this knife, I don't particularly care. This knife I bought, I purchased more for a vibe, more for a feeling. Um, and it also finished off my, uh, you know, my holy trinity of pocket knives. I've owned a Strider. I've owned a Chris Reeve. I've owned a Hinder now. So, um, you know, I can say that I accomplished that in my knife collecting, uh, in my knife collecting journey. So, I'm excited about this, guys. And, I, and um, one thing I like about the Henders, a lot like the Spider Coast, um, this is kind of like the, the Jeep Wrangler of, of pocket knives. There are so many aftermarket parts out there available for this thing. You can literally $100 to $200 yourself to, to bankruptcy buying pieces and parts for this to make it the way that you want it. There are even some parts made by Rick Hender himself that are super rare that are super hard to get, that you're going to pay well above what you could buy a, a good quality pocket knife for. Um, I'm not necessarily into that. I did order a set of black linen, linen micarta, uh, uh, black linen micarta scale for this from Sharp Dress Knives. I'm not sure if that's a secondary maker or I, I'm pretty sure it is from the price. I think it cost me about $58 or something like that. So I would like to switch this over to black micarta just because I love the feel of micarta. Even though this G10 is quality, it's very grippy, I still prefer micarta. So I will be switching to black micarta. And I am interested in having um, my titanium hardware, my clip, uh, pivot, that type of stuff. I am interested in having that uh, bronze anode to go with the, uh, the black canvas micarta scale. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I'm excited about it, guys. I'm excited uh, to see where this leads. I don't know that this will be a permanent part of my collection or not. Um, as of right now, I'm in the you know I'm still in the honeymoon stage, so I'm still loving it. I'm mostly excited that I got one with good action. Even though you guys have heard me say many times that action is not super important to me, but I do appreciate good action. So if a knife has one uh, uh, has good action, that does make it. Um, you know, somewhat more worthwhile. Um, you know, uh, a knife is a cutting tool. You know, this is a knife that, uh, you know, it has no action. It's a fixed blade. It'll do just about everything that knife would do. Maybe some things it won't. But, um, yeah. So, the action is a plus. It's not a not necessarily a must for me. But I will admit, the first couple of hinders that I handled, that uh, even... You know, when I tried to light switch it and really put some force behind it, it just, you know, the blade, well, I was trying to fail it there. Um, you know, the, the blade just kind of 
limped out like that. That is that is that's disappointing. I, I will admit that. But um, luckily, I got one that's not that way. Um, so happy about that. Happy to have achieved owning the Holy Trinity. Um, some people might say it don't count because it didn't own them all at the same time. But you know, f those people, man. Uh, you know, people people trying to make you feel bad about what you have, what you carry, or what you've accomplished in knife collecting are complete, complete douchebags. They're as douchebaggy as the people that, uh, you know, want to give you a hard time about secondary maker parts and things like that. Guys, don't pay any attention to that bullshit, man. Um, those guys clearly have nothing else to live for other than making somebody feel bad about what they have. So, yeah. Um, that's all I got for you today. Look forward to uh, my upcoming video from Carnival EDC and the Hanks that he sent. I started to put them in this video, but I felt like that was a little unfair. I wanted to get the attention they deserve because they are very nice. Um, and uh, I guess that's all I got for you guys today. Y'all know I appreciate any amount of time y'all spend with me. Peace. Love y'all.